Yo, what up everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about form and form validation in React Suite. And by the end of it, we'll have a simple form made with some basic validation. And whenever you click on the on submit button, it'll submit it and show us the values. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so like a lot of components in this library, you have to define a parent tag and then encapsulate all of its children. So firstly, what I'm going to go ahead and do is get rid of this form name right here and change it to something else. So I'll call it form component and I'll call this same thing form component. And I'm going to go ahead and import it into my app.js file. Same thing. So like so, and we got to use it down here and up here. There we go. So basically the issue was that we had our um, form component name the same as the actual uh, component in the React Suite library, so we have to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and do import curly braces form from our suite. And now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, h1 tag and add some curly braces. Now inside of here is where we're going to define our form. So we're going to be making a simple contact form. So I'll go ahead and do form. And inside of here, we're going to define groups. So if you think about a form, like a regular contact form, you have certain areas. So you have a full name, uh, email address, age, etc., and what you're trying to contact the user for and a button if you wanted. So that's what we're going to do right here. So next, we're going to go ahead and do is, and that is a form group. So you can think of a form group as a section in a form. Uh, so let's say you have a contact form. You would have like full name, email, uh, a free text area to write whatever you want. Well, a form group, you can think of that as like one section. So you would have that uh, name, you would have it uh, contain a input field, a label, a helper text, um, a tool tip, anything like that. So let's go ahead and define one. So I'll do form.group. And inside of here, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a new prop. And we're gonna give it a prop called control ID. And we're gonna give it name. And after that, we're going to do form dot control label. So this is going to be our label for the actual um, input field. And that will be oops, full name. This is going to be very similar to what's in the documentation. Um, after that, we're going to do form dot control. And we're going to be controlling name is equal to name. So whatever um, information is going to be typed within this input field when you hit send. It'll, it should show us that data coming back. And after that, we'll just add a simple uh, helper text. Let's say if the user doesn't know what their full name is. So we'll just do form.helper, oops, help text, like so. And we'll just do full name is required. And now if we save it, we'll see one section built right here. So we have one section right there. So we have our uh, label our input field and our helper now if we type some stuff in here we can't submit it obviously uh, so let's go ahead and add some more information let's go ahead and ask for the user's uh, email so it's gonna be very similar so here I'm just gonna go ahead and control D and do email and for this one I'll go ahead and do email and for the helper text we want to make that required as well so we'll do email is required and we should also be able to allow the user to add a uh, text area. So whatever message they want to send us, they should be able to write that inside of there. And in my opinion, it's a little bit confusing on how React Suite does it. Uh, compared to other libraries, you can just have a simple like input field or whatever. Um, but text, uh, our suite sort of takes it to a next level. And what they have to do is uh, you have to define a form group. And inside of here, we're going to give it a control ID. Oops. Control ID and we're going to equal text area. There we go. And so inside of this form group, we have to define now a form control label. So so the user knows that this is an area where you can type a free message if you wanted. So I'll do form dot control label and let's type in here enter a message. And after that, we have to give it a form control. So this form control with a self-closing brace is going to be associated to our uh, text area name that we defined up here in the control ID. So the name is equal to text, oops, text area. And then we also have to give it rows. So how many rows do we want 
um, by default should this text area have by default and the documentation is five so I'm just gonna say six and after that we have to give it an acceptor now this is the confusing part this is the part where um, I don't understand why they do it like this but they just do so inside of this acceptor you have to actually define your um, your input field so your text area field and the way to find this is I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it here. Is you have to define a variable, whatever you're defining here, so text area. You have to give it a forward ref. And this forward ref basically has props and a ref. And after that, we're returning an input field. We're setting it as a text area. Oops. We're setting it as a text area, giving it the ref and all the props. And this is how you define a uh, freeform text message box like this right here. By default, it has five rows. Oh, sorry, six rows. And then after that, you can have as many as you want. Now, let's say I want to use up the entire screen. And it's really simple. All you have to do is just give it a prop called fluid. That would be UID. And now you can see we covered the entire screen. Whether you're zoomed all the way in or zoomed all the way out, it'll just cover the entire screen as possible. Now, let's say you wanted to actually convert this helper text into tooltip. Really simple. All you have to do is just give it a prop of tooltip inside of the helper text and now your helper text is now a tooltip although it's a little cut off right there well now you're probably asking yourself how do I do validation how do I submit the form how do I do all these things well it's actually pretty simple and firstly I have to make a premise preface that the validation in this library is broken I don't I don't know why it's broken but it's broken um, so I'm gonna show you a different way to do it but it still implements the same uh, methodology that the library wants you to use uh, but it's just a little bit of a curve in a different direction all right so the library wants you to use something called schema typed to be able to verify and manage data coming from these form from these form inputs and so what is schema type schema type is basically just a valid uh, validation npm package it's a like, yup formic uh, it's, it just makes sure that the user is typing certain things and is not able to type other things. So if we wanted to make sure that you know this full name is required, we want to make sure that the actual user can't submit the page without actually inputting something in here. So I've babbled on way too much. Let me just go ahead and actually show you guys how to work with this. It's really simple. So in the library, it actually tells you that you can import uh, something called schema, but this is actually broken, which is very unfortunate. I hope that they fix it later. So the other way to do this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing a NPM package. Uh, we're actually going to be installing schema type directly from the actual uh, uh, NPM library itself. So what we'll do is we're going to do NPM install schema dash typed dash dash save. Now I've already say I've already installed it, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, but that's all you have to do. And so once you've installed it, what we're going to do then is we have to import it. So what we're going to do is import schema model and string type from schema typed like so and so now what we have to do is we need to define a model uh, a schema model is basically what you're telling the program to check for so what we're going to do is const model is equal to schema model like so and inside of here we can give it certain um, values so for our first value, what I'll do is I'll give it a name, and this name is going to be string type dot. Oops, yeah, why are you doing that? Dot uh, is required, and we're going to give it a message: full name is required, like so. And after that, we'll do email. So we want to make sure that the email is a legit email, so we'll do email string type dot is email and inside of here if the email is not valid we're just typing here email must be valid v -A -L -D -D. I think I spelled that right I'm not a I'm not an English speaker so I don't know um, after this uh, we have to do um, we're, we're gonna just make sure that some they're actually typing a message inside of the text area so what I'll do is text area string type dot is required and we'll just type in here a message must be entered there we go
Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a submit button, and you guys probably remember how to do that from our previous video on buttons. We're going to create a button toolbar first, and inside of here we're going to create a button. The self-closing brace, oops, not a self-closing brace, um, with a double brace. And inside here I'm going to type in here submit, and the button will have an appearance of primary, and we'll do type is equal to submit. There we go. And then now what we have to do is we, when you click it, we actually want to uh, tell the program, hey, check my model and check if these values are what they are. So firstly, what we have to do is we need to give it something called form ref. Now, what that is, is just simply just use ref. So I'm going to do const form ref is equal to react dot use ref. And then after that, what we're going to be doing is just applying that into our form tag right here. So I'll do, uh, I think it's ref. There we go. Yep. Ref is equal to form ref like so. And after that, let's do model is equal to model. And now if we should, if we submit it, something should happen. There we go. So now it's actually checking our model. So it's actually seeing our full name. Is something there? Nope. So I check our email, and that's because we didn't add the is required property at the end. And we'll just give it a message. This is required. There we go. And so now if I click submit, it should be asking. There we go. So now we have full name required, email required, enter a message required. Now if I do type some information here, um, it won't go anywhere. So if I click submit, nothing will happen. Let's go ahead and actually send some data into our console log now. So to do that, the first thing we have to do is we need to create a use state variable, which is basically going to be checking for the data that's entered in each input field. So what I'm going to do is const form value and set form value is equal to react dot use state. And this is going to be an object, which is going to contain name initially is a string, an empty string, uh, email, which is an empty string. Oops and a text area, which should ideally be called message, um, but I'll leave it as text area for now, it's fine. And so after this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a handle submit function, which is just gonna very simply just submit our actual data. So const handle submit is equal to function like so. And this is coming straight from the actual documentation. So we're gonna do if form if not form ref, dot current dot check then we're just gonna oops then we're gonna just submit an error so we'll do console dot error and I'll do form error and then we'll just do simple return and if everything is working if everything is fine then what's gonna then what we'll do is go ahead and just do console.log form value and form value like so. But now what we have to do is we actually need to attach our data to the form. Sorry, we have need to attach our handle submit function to the form. So what we have to do is on change, firstly we need to check for our data to be on change, form value, and then on submit, we're gonna give it our handle submit function like so. And now if we test it out, we should see Oh, it's error. Now it's saying invalid prop on change of type object supplied. It's actually called set form value. Is that it? Ah, oh, there we go. It's called set form value. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I did form value there. There we go. Cool. So now if we test it out, we should see initially nothing's happening. There's a form error, which is perfect. Now if we type in here, let's say Kevin uh, Johnson. If I click submit. Still form error, perfect, because we have two errors happening right there. Then we'll type in here Kevin at Kevinson.com. One, two, three. There we go. Okay, so it's valid, perfect. And now we need to enter a message. I'll type in help. Hey. Oh, that's weird. Oh, you know why? Oh, okay, it's because our text area was is, is within our actual function component right there. So let's go ahead and put it outside. Now it should be working perfect. So now right here, I'll type a real message. This is a message. Heart emoji. And now if I click submit, let me zoom in here a ton. 
I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Whoopsie doopsies. We should see here, perfect. So we have our data email, Kevin at kevinson.com, name Kevin Johnson, text area. This is a message, heart emoji. Perfect. So now we know that our form is working and we added validation and um, some basic styling. Cool. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend you looking uh, at the schema type documentation uh, because it is very, very thorough and very good. Uh, the link to that is in the description down below or you can just Google search it. And if you did enjoy this, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.